the risk assessment as such, which is, well, obviously for all of us, is known as a must. Risk as such, a focus to the risk, is not, it's not something very new. But of course, the, 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 the significance uh, and, uh, and the importance of, on risk became more significant with the fourth AML directive. But I would distinguish a bit uh, a new, which is a new reality for all legacy and newcomers, is documentation of risk-based approach involving risk assessment. So from your practice, from your experience, do you still find that uh, financial institutions or other players in the market uh, accept this documentation of risk-based approach and in general uh, um, enterprise-wide risk assessment as a new reality, which already exists and it's nothing new? Or have you already, or have you, or, or you still see some of the players who see it as a surprise, as a surprise new reality for them to make to have such risk assessment? Um, uh, um, I, I would say I don't see. Uh, I, I mean, currently, financial institutions do not see this as a new reality. It is true that it comes from the the, the fourth directive, the third directive already mm -hmm. mentioned risk-based approach. Uh, mm -hmm not the risk assessment itself, but mm -hmm. the risk-based approach. So, so we have had um, already some, 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 some uh, regulation and guidances for, for a few years now mm -hmm. um, uh, about applying a, a, a risk uh, assessment in order to implement. So I wouldn't, see, I wouldn't say it is a new reality, mm -hmm. okay? Um, what I think some financial institutions are struggling, are struggling with is the way they implement mm -hmm. this risk assessment, the way they document mm -hmm. the risk assessment. And I still see a lot of financial institutions that treat this document mm -hmm. uh, more as a document than more as a procedure in mm -hmm. order to make sure uh, that, that uh, you, you identify your risks and this has an impact to your controls and procedures. Okay? Um, we are lucky that most of the regulations uh, globally already includes um, um, to carry out a risk assessment before you implement controls and procedures. But it is true, as I said, still some entities are struggling in how to do this and they see it as an isolated exercise, static, mm -hmm. uh, more than um, something dynamic, robust, that can help you to implement controls and procedures. And sorry, I mean, I don't want to be very long. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. So no differences between jurisdictions as well? Um, possibly, yes. Possibly you have, I mean, it is true that, um, well, we have the uh, uh, European uh, directives that in the end uh, fall down into regulations quite similar uh, in, in Europe mm -hmm. or EU, EU countries. Um, so I would say that the, the, the possibly there is a quite common approach. But if you go further than that and you go to other jurisdictions, you might, you need to, you definitely apply a different um, you can find different approaches to apply the risk assessment, okay? Um, and also there are differences between uh, entities with, with global footprint mm -hmm. or, or with uh, domestic uh, companies uh, as well. So, um, yes, I would say differences with, uh, uh, depending on the jurisdictions. Good. That is, you are representing, I would say, rather new financial institution. So, the enterprise-wide risk assessment, was it something new for you at the beginning or it was something that you already took into account before uh, kicking off? Well, uh, this whole risk-based approach, you know, it's, it's rather an odd question in a way that everything in finance is risk-based. So, I mean, for fintechs that uh, originate outside finance, this might be a bit of a new exercise and something uh, unexpected. But for example, if we take the traditional industry, banking, so to say, it took us as a society several banking crises to approach, uh, to arrive to, to a situation where we have internal risk-based ba uh, risk models allowed uh, to, for example, to assess credit risk. I think it's, uh, it can be extended to the whole industry and the AML as well. So for, for me, it's something that does not stem from the rules that mm -hmm. are, you know, uh, originate outside your organization. That is, you know, this is a law that's applicable to everyone. Uh, for me, this is a part of uh, finance. But that's my personal take. 
I mean, when, when you look at it uh, uh, from your organization's perspective, of course, this is also a procedure that has to be strictly followed according to all the laws and regulations. So I would lie if I said that, you know, I knew by heart every single aspect of the law uh, when I started. Uh, but no, it was something that I expected because for me it seems like a, you know, a natural part of, of finance. Was it a challenge to have a documentation of such risk assessment or it was something very natural flow which was stipulated in several like procedures? What, what was the, 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 the first step in this, risk, in this enterprise wide risk assessment? Uh, At I, the very I, beginning, because what just uh, that is very uh, well. I'm happy to hear from Eric that it's already something not new reality, or which is something very becomes a daily thing to have such a, a enterprise-wide assessment in all the financial legacy yeah. financial institutions. But it's not a secret what, that we still in Lithuania see some of them who, for whom it's quite a, a rather new reality or something uh, which is a bit uh, different thing that they had considered before. So that. That is, I would say, it can be sometimes a question of, of technicality, how to make it, how to document it. Um, maybe it's you have it in your mind, but maybe sometimes your minds are not clearly put it on the paper and then the regulator comes and uh, lacks some of the information or some of the very significant information uh, required for, for, for the market player. So that is... So... I would say that uh, there's no clear-cut answer to this. Uh, I mean, from Paravesk's uh, point of view, at least we've discussed more uh, technicalities. You know, what is a sufficient amount of documentation, mm -hmm. how we want it to be displayed, how accessible should we make it. For example, should the board of directors have the access to all this sensitive customer information and everything? Does that have to be on ask permission basis or it should be available just you know with the with the credentials that you get from your IT department or or something so a lot of technical questions were took the st central stage i i would say uh, not whether you know that information has to be saved or or secured at least for us it was never a discussion uh, are we in a breach of gdpr <laughs> we, we thought that you know aml is is imperative and and we oh, have right. to okay. we have to do it mm -hmm. Agla, you are representing a non-financial institution, which in its essence, I would say, is something relates with finance world. So how you manage to do or how you solve this uh, risk assessment uh, in general, which is not uh, formally obligatory to your business? Uh, yes, so since we are not regulated yet, uh, I, I have to agree with Darius that, well, the very outcomes of the risk assessment are already there in the processes. And, uh, you know, even though uh, it might not be documented, um, the risk assessment is already there because it was done by the people who actually created that kind of business. You know, the risk assessment was being made at the moment they were thinking of the business model. They were thinking which kind of clients shall we onboard, uh, which jurisdictions are we going to operate in, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, all of this information was taken into account before, you know, actually introducing the well, the processes. So I would say that it's not. Uh, if, even if it's not mm -hmm. really documented, which, uh, which will definitely be done by the time the regulation comes into force, but it is already there because all the processes have been based on the results of the risk assessment. Exactly. So that is uh, the good turn to the question. Actually, I wanted to ask first to Hendrik, but we can continue with you, Agla, about this risk assessment when you document it, when you put it on the paper. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it happens that something pops up which was not previously uh, considered, for instance. And then, but you already have certain internal control measures, already systems which are existing and working. And when you're making this documented uh, risk assessment, are you not afraid that you will try to put risk assessment, which is a base actually in the ideal world, into your current existing control systems? You know, to 
make it in opposite way. So or you don't think that it is a risk of such, you know, a bit uh, to changing places or, of, or order of, of the tasks or... Well, I think that... Um well, I, as a compliance officer, think that, of course, I do agree with you that risk assessment is the very first thing that has to be done, that's fundamental. Uh, but, for example, in cases such as ours, well, um, I am sure that one of the most important things and the reasons why the risk assessment as such is being carried out is for the shareholders, for the board, to be able to critically assess the actual situation. So I think that, well, I'm, I'm not afraid that we will try to fit, you know, the risk assessment into the framework that we've already been operating within, but this is, you know, the results of the risk assessment is something that will have to be, you know, to ring a bell in the, in the heads of the shareholders, and it, it definitely does. So this is how, I think this is, well, this is what they expect uh, us to do. When we carry out risk assessment, they mm -hmm. expect us to be as sincere as possible and to take as many, um, as many indicators as possible and you know, to have everything in place so they can actually decide on what is the, what is the risk appetite of the, uh, of, the, of the company. So I think, well, I'm, I'm not really much afraid of that because I know that this is you know, fundamental and that... Yeah. It is, it is, mm -hmm. but sometimes it can result you know, in, in, in quite significant reshaping of internal systems, but I'm very happy that you, <laughs> you don't see it as, yes, as a it risk. It depends you know, on the purpose. Of why course, initially, of why, why do you do it initially? When, well, I personally think, and, I, and I'm sure that all in my company thinks that this is, you know, very, this is the most important thing that you have to do for your internal purposes, not, bec not to be, you know, com the compliant in the eyes Picking of the regulator. The box, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's, you know, that's why I'm not live, afraid of that. A live thing in, in, in mm -hmm. the organization. And, and how is, in your experience, I guess you should uh, have faced some uh, of organizations who tried to document risk assessment uh, as such, and after doing this exercise, they understood that the internal control systems procedures are not sufficient, or something is lacking, or maybe completely not, uh, not something matching with the, with the results of risk assessment. How, in that case, as the institutions try to figure out this uh, rebus? Are uh, they uh, still uh, trying to fit? Uh, um, um, I would say, I mean, a couple of, uh, two or three years ago, you still could find this situation, okay? Mm -hmm. um, it is true that uh, uh, possibly in the last uh, one, two years, there have been a lot of evolution in this, and and, and I have to say that uh, it is difficult now. Uh, still, you, you still can find some, and possibly not global organizations or not, not organizations with glo global footprint, mm -hmm. more domestic banks, and um, that they carry out the risk assessment as an isolated exercise and mm -hmm. they just document it. So if the regulator comes, uh, I'll, show, I'll show them that uh, I, have, I, I run uh, this exercise. So I would say, yeah, um, uh, still you can find it, but I would say that uh, it, it, this is moving very rapidly. And the regulator is helping a lot in this. Obviously, the pressure regulator mm -hmm. on having the right risk assessments uh, applied uh, are, are, uh, is key. And I've seen in a few jurisdictions, I know a couple of jurisdictions in which the regulator has just reviewed risk assessments. Mm -hmm. uh, on when they do kind of uh, a specific uh, reviews, they only review risk assessment. Okay, Spain, for instance, I, I know, I know that the regulator, which normally do what we call thematic reviews. Mm -hmm. um, um, uh, last year, uh, they did a thematic review on the most important financial institutions only on risk assessment, mm -hmm. how they apply, what kind of methodologies, where they robust, where they are automating risk mm -hmm. factors, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there was no such a case as when the institutions had to reshape the internal procedures, control procedures, in order to, 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 to be compliant with their own uh, assessment, um, risk assessment. Some banks had to do. I mean, it is true that once you implement a risk assessment, I mean, from, from a scratch, uh, you, you definitely have controls and procedures in place that need to change somehow. 
uh, and some banks have struggled uh, to, uh, to do this. But this is the only way to do it. Um, because it's a ch challenge when it's you already have existing institutions. Absolutely. And we are talking sometimes it. uh, about uh, it's not just whether I document this or exactly. not, it's changing technology, exactly. it's changing controls and procedures, it's changing a lot of things. And that is how you started with this. So you were in that ideal world, having new company with a new page and having risk assessment first, and then after only internal control measures. How it was? I, I think no one is in ideal world in this industry. I mean, even <laughs> if you're an upstart uh, with a blank page, uh, it's, it's less than ideal in a way that you still have to build everything up from the ground. Uh, yeah. So. That's, that's basically how we started. <laughs> we had to build everything up. Uh, and of course, in the process, uh, you learn a lot of things. Uh, like, for example, when you try to execute all your internal procedures mm -hmm. or your internal rules, when you pr put them into practice, you sometimes learn and you know it's, it's not always the bottom-up uh, feedback you know, that you mm -hmm. receive from your email specialist. It sometimes can be the receivers on the end that actually require more information. So, for example, when you present a case to your board, uh, that, for example, okay, we have this high-risk customers, now we have gathered this and that on, on, on him, it does look okay, we recommend to onboard him, but, you know, the board, if they take the, their job seriously, and in our case they do, uh, they, they actually go through the information, and, and in that process we actually learn a lot of valuable feedback, because, you know, when, when specialists are engaged in that task, they, uh, they gather that information, and they learn a lot uh, that, uh, you know, that just stays in their head. For example, a Google search was done, but for example, it might not have been saved as a screenshot or something like that. So, of course, a uh, board wants to make sure that, you know, all these things uh, were run through and they don't want to Google uh, a customer themselves when, when they review the case. So, a lot of things uh, like that uh, gets uh, uh, in the queue to, to get improved. And a lot of them uh, requires investment. So, I mean, uh, in terms of how we develop our internal systems, uh, I would say that about uh, half of our expenditure goes to, the, to, to improving compliance components. And Toma, what was your experience? Maybe some kind of unique aspects from technological side uh, with, these, uh, with these, you know, the business of cryptocurrency is really very different from the ones that legacy banks or other financial institutions do. So maybe from your perspective, there are some kind of unique things from risk assessment perspective. Um, so I can share, uh, I've done risk assessments uh, for the traditional financial institutions, uh, uh, entity-wide risk assessments. So from that perspective, I remember the biggest challenge was combining uh, quantitative and qualitative analysis. Uh, by this I mean uh, when we started off, everyone thought that risk assessment is just a bunch of questionnaires filled out by different units in the bank and then we gather all those sheets of paper, uh, scrape them together and th that's our uh, risk assessment. Uh, and then someone calculates a general score uh, and that's our risk appetite. <laughs> so, uh, and when we uh, started to to look at the ways to uh, improve such a, uh, a, such a basis. Uh, of course, we started gathering uh, quantitative information, uh, how much of uh, certain risky uh, jurisdictions or certain risky products we have, and compare it with, uh, with this qualitative information. So, okay, so uh, what are those um, uh, risks about, and what uh, internal controls do we have, how many of those, or are they effective? This is mm -hmm. another quantitative. So uh, I guess this was uh, a, a major lesson uh, that uh, we need to, uh, to, to, to take both approaches and combine them. And uh, from the cryptocurrency industry, which I work now, uh, we only are engaging in this risk assessment uh, at the moment. So I would not say that there are that many differences in the methodology, but I would say that, uh, again, when you, uh, if you are a traditional financial institution, you evaluate your products. If you are a cryptocurrency exchange, you, your products are different cryptocurrencies you offer to your customers. So uh, as I was referring in my uh, presentation earlier, different cryptocurrencies should be looked at, maybe exchange as a service is uh, one type of service, but if you 
exchange uh, uh, Monero, for example, in, uh, and, and if you exchange uh, Bitcoin to cash, so th uh, the risks might end up being uh, completely different. So, mm -hmm. so you have to look into these kind of spe specifics. Uh, then, of course, uh, uh, the actors, uh, mm -hmm. which I talked about, uh, etc. So there are specifics, um, but. This uh, methodology, I would say, is it's, it's the same. You you gather information on on uh, on what you're doing, what you plan to do. If you're uh, trying to introduce new cha channel or new product, uh, you include it uh, mm -hmm. so in order to, to, to arrive at some and uh, some uh, uh, residual risk, which you see at and think whether you need to adjust your mm -hmm. current controls mm -hmm. or whether you are good with them, you can accept them, uh, the, the level of risk uh, w which is there, or maybe you want to mitigate them. And uh, we have a, well, re the relevant question addressed to en Enric. Can you name the weak, uh, weakest points of risk assessments of fintechs and legacy institutions? And in your subjective evaluation, are risk assessments executed effectively? You mean in in in, in both uh, entities? In, uh, yeah. What is uh, what is the uh, weakest points of risk assessments of fintechs and legacy institutions, and uh, are the uh, risk assessments executed effectively in both uh, okay. cases? Okay. Um, well, I'll, I'll I'll provide an overview in in one minute, and then possibly I'll, <laughs> I'll pass it on to my colleagues. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, 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 in terms of fintechs, uh, possibly they, are, they, they definitely know more than myself. I could say possibly the difference between newcomers and legacy. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, and I still keep with, with the messages I, I provided before. Um, um, as as, uh, as um, um, it was commented before, I mean, it, apparently I could say for a newcomer it's easier because they start everything from scratch. But uh, and they, don't know, they do not have all the internal control um, uh, uh, plays there, which, mm -hmm. which uh, affects you in how you do your risk assessment, which never should. I mean, in the end, you, when, when you do risk assessments, you make sure you, 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 you identify risks. Um, uh, but it's definitely a challenge for legacy banks. And, and in terms of the way they, implement, they, they have started to implement it, um, it is true, um, as it was mentioned also by... by by my colleague in here, um, um, risk assessment, you do risk assessment for AML, but for other areas in the bank. So normally legacy banks incorporated methodologies used in other areas in order mm -hmm. to, to build up um, uh, this risk assessment. So make sure um, that, uh, that you could apply this methodology and to make it consistent according to the, the, other, um, the other risk assessment carried out in, in banks. So I would say, um, the approach is different, mm -hmm. but um, um, uh, uh, and in the end, uh, once they get there, the weaknesses are the same. I mean, when you have, in the end, an isolated exercise, this is an isolated exercise. When, when it was mentioned that mm -hmm. they, they did the risk assessment and they just stapled the, the, mm -hmm. the sheets on, 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 the, on the, the final outcome, since, okay, is this going to fit any um, other control and procedure in the area? Definitely not. Um, so, in the end, you can end up to, to the same weaknesses. Okay. Tama, would be your the same opinion? Because you are very mm. in that position to mm. compare legacy institution mm. with a very new crypto industry. So, the weaknesses. In terms of mm. weaknesses. I would say uh, that risk assessment is not a one-time exercise. And there were it has to be um, reviewed over the course of the year if we assume that it's conducted once, once in a year. So after the risk assessment exercise is done, I think uh, uh, what most of, uh, mm, or maybe there is a risk, I cannot tell about uh, other institutions which I don't know, but there is a risk that uh, everybody forgets it. So it wasn't a huge exercise. We worked hard for two months. We conducted it. Here we are, we, we put it in the drawer and we forget it. This should not happen because there should be quarterly reviews on uh, what are the outcomes of this risk ass assessment. So have we decided to change our, um, some, some kind of, of our controls? Have we decided to uh, mitigate uh, uh, the risks? And somebody uh, should you know, 
take uh, take charge. Uh, so there should be a, a, an action plan mm -hmm. after this risk assessment, of course, which has to be followed. Uh, and uh, uh, and I I'm pretty sure it has to be followed on the uh, at the highest level. So uh, it should be reported to the board of directors, so that we don't arrive at the situation that the next year comes, and then we have surprisingly the same uh, maybe uh, level of risk which we previous year wanted to uh, reduce. So so I think the challenge is not to not to do mm -hmm. it once uh, once one-off one exercise. Mm 